Alright, this is a uh, lighting console that my boss bought uh, at an auction. It's uh, worth about, you know, 1500 bucks when it was new in 2002. And he got it for about 100 bucks as is. He couldn't look at it before he bought it. He just, you know, took it home and, and was hoping it, w it would work. And unfortunately it didn't. Uh, a whole bunch of the buttons uh, weren't working. And uh, it went through this kind of annoying self-test when it was powering up. And, oh, shut up, cat. Um... <laughs> Uh, so he uh, gave it to me to take a look at it, and, uh, and this is what I came up with. Uh, it was kind of interesting. Uh, first off, as you can see, uh, you know, how to spill its guts. Uh, you know, here's the case right here. Um, you know, I had to spill its guts so that I could actually get at both sides of the case and, and troubleshoot it when I, when I needed to trace things around. What are my cats doing over there? Um... <laughs> Uh, perils of cats. Um, anyway, yeah, I needed to be able to figure out where signals are going, or more accurately, not going. Uh, so after I, you know, have the gut spilled, uh, first thing I got to do is figure out how to power it up. Now, uh, power supply is over here. Um, what I could have done was, you know, just plugged it in and just uh, had it open and and gone nuts. But uh, I I didn't like the idea of mains electricity going in here and also like not having protection other than circuit breakers and fuses if uh, if something went wrong uh, what I would have liked to have done the, the whole thing runs on on a 5 volt power supply um, but it's like five different 5 volt power supplies there's like three uh, regulators right here another one right here and um, and uh, yeah, just all kind of independently generating five volts, just uh, separate from each other. So, uh, so I did have to like involve this board a little bit. Uh, what I ended up doing was I, I just found the bridge rectifier uh, and just plugged in my my bench supply on the DC side of that rectifier. And the transformer is is nine volts, so you know I just plug nine volts into my power supply and uh, and go nuts. Now, uh, what I like to do is engage uh, overcurrent protection. Um, now, what I what happens when I try and boot it up with overcurrent on is oh, it won't uh, won't boot up. That's because um, these uh, filter caps right here, um, you know, they have a lot of inrush current when I when I boot the thing up. So um, you know, I just have to. Disable overcurrent uh, and then enable it again. So right here, uh, see, it's going through a bit of a self-test thing, and the reason for that is, um, you know, sometime in the last decade, uh, the backup battery on the controller board went dead, and it wasn't keeping RAM alive anymore. Uh, and you know what this thing is programmed and it boots up and if there's nothing stored in RAM it thinks it's you know on the assembly line of the factory so uh, you know some QA technician has to uh, sit there and watch like every LED light in in sequence um, before they can you know ship it out the door uh, so uh, rather than wait for this thing to go through its whole self-test routine, every time I booted it up and uh, while I was testing it, I just uh, you know wired a couple wires in where the battery was, uh, you know set this to the voltage of that backup battery and turn that on. And um, let's see, is this thing done yet? Uh, still, still checking, still checking LEDs. Uh, a couple more, a couple more, a couple more. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. Okay, cool. Check end. Everything works. Okay, I can uh, now turn this thing off, turn it back on again, and it, you know, boots straight up. It's pretty great. So now that I got this thing booted up, um, I want to uh, be able to trace things with my oscilloscope. And the thing is, the um, oscilloscope is ground-referenced. 
you know, there needs to be a common ground between between it and the device you're measuring and this thing. Uh, the outputs of my power supply are isolated, uh, so there is no common ground reference between the two. So uh, what I, you know, what I did was I uh, just took one of the outputs, one of the inputs of my scope, and had this little banana adapter on it, and wired that up to the negatives of both uh, channels of the power supply. So now they're uh, grounded to each other; that they share a ground reference, and I can actually. Uh, probe signals. So yeah, you know, stick something on that pen. Hey, look at that. We're, we're seeing a signal. So, um, yeah, I, um, the, the buttons are, you know, it's a standard key switch arrangement, uh, key, key switch matrix. Um, you know, I, I wired up, uh, this little keyboard, uh, by myself, so I was kind of, I'm kind of familiar already with how key switch matrixes work. If you don't know, you know, like Google it. It's pretty pretty easy to, to find. Um, my suspicion, uh, because all the buttons that were out were in kind of the same section, was that uh, maybe they were on like one column of the key switch matrix and um, like the pin that was driving that column is out on the microcontroller or something like that. So I uh, traced a few of these buttons around and figured out that uh, they're like these two ICs are what are driving uh, driving the key switch matrix, and uh, the the ones that work are on this IC, and the ones that don't work are on this one. Uh, let's see if I can focus here. There we go. Um, so I thought, you know, maybe maybe this IC is dead. So I uh, unsocketed them, swapped them around. And tried to see if the problem maybe followed followed one of them, and uh, the problem you know s stayed on this one. Uh, so it was a problem was somewhere, you know, after this socket or something like feeding this IC or or something like that. So um, I uh, started you know tracing signals on pins, and what I noticed was that there wasn't any output coming off of this IC, but there was output coming out of this one. Um, so, you know, why is that? I uh, looked up the data sheet on that IC, and it's, um, come on, Iris, you can do it. Okay, it's, it's come on, it's this thing. And, um, <coughs> uh, what I figured out was that, um, there's a pin, the, the output enable pin. It's uh, you know pin pin number one on um, on this side of the IC, and uh, it was getting signal on this one and not getting signal on this one. <coughs> and kind of here's what that signal looks like. Um, and so there had to be something. <coughs> like uh, whatever was feeding that pin wasn't working or something like that. I tried to trace the, the PCB line going to that pin and I couldn't figure out where it went. Like it was like uh, this is the ribbon cable that goes to the, the CPU board. You know it wasn't popping up on any of these pins. Wasn't uh, wasn't popping up anywhere. I'm like what, what the hell. Yeah, you can't really see it here, but the pin going between these, the, the PCB line going between these two ICs is corroded. Uh, there's no continuity in there. You can kind of see it. It's uh, right, right there. You can see that's missing. Um, I don't know how that happened. Uh, this must have happened just sometime in, in the last decade. Um, but uh, figured out that that trace uh, actually goes to uh, pin one here. They're they're in common, and then they go to like one of these pins right here. Um, so what I just ended up doing was uh, wiring in uh, just a little little piece of wire right there uh, to connect them again. And um, yeah, now. We are uh, actually seeing seeing output 
on uh, from this IC and um, booted it up all the uh, all the buttons are, are working and it is, it's pretty great uh, so pretty easy fix once I figured out what was going on um, I just gotta put this thing back together now and uh, and we'll have a fully functional lighting console for a hundred bucks it's pretty great so uh, hope you found this video informative uh, I'll see you guys later